What is up everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be reacting to what exactly is a late model. I think I've done the video where I think it was what exactly is a super modified. Um, and then a couple of you have requested I react to this one as well. I think I did the IndyCar one as well. So I've done quite a few of them. And now I'm doing the late model one. Uh, I do love these videos um, because they're giving me a good insight on each like car and motorsport which is good for me because if you have been here from the beginning you'll know that when i started this channel the only motorsport i watched was f1 <laughs> um well i watched like f1 two three and like the f1 academy but that that was it i stick to like formula one world sort of and then onto this channel and now i'm into nascar indycar dirt racing rally so you know what's next who knows probably wc that's what i'm getting into next um again if you've been following from the beginning you'll know that you know how i feel about like motorbikes and i can do it and the races they look great but it's just it's just the crashes because <laughs> when they fall they fly off the bike and that is terrifying um <laughs> but who knows Maybe I'll eventually end up watching that as well. But today we're reacting to what exactly is a late model. So let's just get straight into it. But before we do that, make sure you subscribe. Over half of you that watch my videos start subscribed. Just hit the bell, it takes two seconds. And if you'd like to become a member on this channel and receive exclusive perks, you can also do that by hitting the join button down below. All right, let's go. I'm excited. If you've watched auto racing in any capacity in North America, then you have inevitably seen one of these things hurtling around a short track somewhere. These squat, low riding, I have heard slick, of them. four wheeled speed demons are called late models. Wait a second, late model? Late model of what? Well, it's just the latest model of current street cars like mm, Camaros, okay. Mustangs, etc. Hold up, these don't look like any street cars I've ever seen. And they certainly don't look like NASCAR stock cars either. No. What exactly is going on here? Well, that's going to take explaining, so buckle up, because late model racing is the basis for all stock car racing in America as we know it. Mm. Everybody wants to see the latest and greatest cars run against each other to determine which one is better. That show pretty much just sells itself. But as far as the world of NASCAR stock car yeah. racing is concerned, <laughs> late model racing made its officially sanctioned debut in July of 1949 with the very first NASCAR strictly stock race. The NASCAR modified division had existed since 1948, but that division ran older pre-World War II cars that had been heavily modified for racing, as the name Look implied. Look at them! The strictly stock division was different, though. Its rule set mandated that all entrants had to run a car from the current model year or the last two years, thus the name a late model. And even today, you still hear some older commentators refer to the cup cars as late model stock cars. But hold up, I thought these were late models. I have cars, heard not that. these, right? Correct, and yes, the language is going to get a bit fuzzy, but for the purposes of is clarity, about we're going to really focus on local me. short track racing and how they Guys, created these late models that we see today. <laughs> confusing when NASCAR me even more. wasn't hosting a major league race at one of the hundreds of tracks that they went to over the decades, it was up to individual track owners to host weekly races themselves to keep the lights turned on. They were now luxury items and symbols of personal wealth. Even yeah, taking wow, into account inflation, the price of cars was becoming too much for the average local yokel to just buy for shots and goggles. That was about the time when someone had a very devious idea. What if I find a brand new 55 wow. Chevy Bel Air that's broken down, buy just the body, and hang it on my older oh, car's to frame and race a that? Car like that? That's f***ing illegal. Well, not yet it ain't. Who knows how long people got away with this, but by I the mid-60s, like all attempts to cars. stop it were all for mm. naught as even NASCAR Love itself it. had started allowing teams to put together purpose-built racing chassis and then hang the newest car bodies on top of them. Someone somewhere had to do something. Our unlikely hero would end up being the president of Old Dominion Speedway in Manassas, Virginia, a guy by the name of Dickie Gore. Jesus, what is with these names? Anyway, he called a meeting between his top yeah, competitors <laughs> prior to the 1978 season and tried to come up with a new rule set to cap costs. They decided to use as many stock parts as possible, Everything from carburetors to shocks to that exhaust were all stock parts <laughs> bought straight from the factory. Even the front ends of the cars were taken directly wow. from Camaros right off the street. All told, including the cost of a motor, you could buy one of these cars for as little as $4,000. And now they had a new option, the super late model. So many different models, what the hell? There's late model, super late model. These things look like something shaped more by natural car. selection than mechanical What's ingenuity. 
they honestly look like the offspring of a rocket ship and a great white shark. Yeah, and they yes, do they look were every like race bit cars. as fast as they looked. Some of the mad scientists we have to thank for these ridiculous race cars are Gary Ballou and Ray Dillon, as they pushed the envelope of late model racing to unspeakable heights. Eventually, there were three main late model divisions. Limited right. late models ran scuffed tires with smaller carburetors limiting horsepower. A late model stock and a limited late model are essentially the same, but the stocks are allowed to run newer sticker tires and have bigger, better carburetors. <laughs> and finally, a super late model has a more aerodynamically aggressive yes, body, which runs a 90 degree spoiler, category, about 50 more horsepower the most, over the stock, like, weighs about 300 pounds less, um, and the single biggest difference, in a holdover from the innovation of the 80s, the straight Compared rail chassis. <laughs> a late model stock runs what is called a perimeter chassis, which means the frame rails on the left and right are equal distance from the center line of the car. A straight right. rail or offset design has the right side frame rail running straight from nose to tail so that most of the weight is on the left side, helping the car turn better oh. at speed since all the short tracks are run counterclockwise. Mm. Supers also have looser rules so innovation is still possible in that division. But that wasn't enough for some folks. One of the offshoots during the 80s became known as the Outlaw Late Model. With straight lines and a squat body, the Outlaws kind like of look like the Supers of the look 80s like rocket they mostly ships. settled in the Midwest. <laughs> Rules are very loose for the outlaws, as the name implies, but to keep cost contained, one very simple rule has defined them since day one. The body must be comprised of four contiguous pieces of sheet metal. That's it. Two on the sides, That's one it. in the front, and one in the back. And since they can beat and bang with their closed wheel wells, they almost always put on one hell of an event wherever they show up. They're hit all over the country, but oh, especially in the Southeast like that, where they originated. Sure we'll put on Since the 70s, event. late model racing has become the starting Good point event. for just about anybody looking to get to the top division of NASCAR. From Mark Martin to Denny Hamlin, from Dick Trickle to William Byron, this is the ground floor. This is oh, where it all okay. begins for most drivers. So if you want to see the future stars of NASCAR, they're out there right now in all 50 states, tuning up their late models for a Saturday night showdown somewhere. The NASCAR Advance Auto Parts Weekly Series is the sanctioning body for all local late model racing in the U.S. And every year a national champion is crowned and it's a throwback to the way things used to be. If you're interested in seeing the best of the best short trackers in the country, those three divisions are a great place to start. With okay. so many variants, divisions, and tracks in these races, <laughs> late model racing is a fantastic way to attend your first race or your 100th. And if you've got your eyes set on NASCAR superstardom, this is something you're going to have to master one day. I love that video. There was uh, a lot of information in it. Like he said, it was confusing at the beginning when there were like so many different names and I was like, what? There's so many different like models to a late model, like um, like little like sub models. Yeah, that was really fascinating. Uh, and like even the way that the cars looked, like he said, some of them look like rocket ships. <laughs> they did not look like cars. Um, but yeah, that was a good video. So with that being said, if you have any other videos that you'd like me to react to, drop them in the comments. I'm working my way through everybody's suggestions at the moment. If you did want to check out any of my other socials, they are all linked down below. And if you want to become a member on this channel and receive exclusive perks, you can also do that by hitting the join button down below. But I hope you enjoyed today's reaction and I will catch you next time for the next one. Bye. Thank you.